Hey everyone, it's TK Friday. Today's a follow-up from last week's video. This one's called Masking and Modifying on the Fly. You're going to learn some new techniques today. You don't want to miss this one, so stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Hey, it's TK Friday again and I'm glad you're here with me. I have downloadable notes and the image for you today. Definitely download these notes. It's very important because I'm going to show you a technique. It's going to take me a little bit of time to show you, but once you get this technique, it's going to be something you could really use in your TK8 editing workflow. So pay close attention. I'm going to take it slow because I'll be using the mass calculator. I'll be doing something a little different today. So please pay close attention. And these notes along with the image will be a great reference guide for you. If you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, it's a really good value. It's only $29. Just click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you to the TK web store. There you can purchase the plugin for Photoshop as well as training videos. And you can use my promo code DK15 and save 15% off your entire purchase. When you do that, you're helping to support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I thank you. Before I start, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory. I was talking to Tony Kuiper. We did our weekly Skype call, and I was showing him what I was going to do for the TK Friday video, and I was showing him some of the images and so on and so forth, what I was doing. And as oftentimes happens, we find out different ways of doing things, and so we kind of wrapped our heads together and came up with a really interesting technique, which I want to show you today. So it's going to put today's video on hold till next week. This is a supplement to that video if you want to think of it that way, but I'm going to show you some really cool masking techniques, how we can modify our masks on the fly, and it involves the mask calculator, but I will take it slow as I said so you can really get it, and then you're going to have this video as a reference guide along with the PDF notes, so I think it's going to be very helpful, but coming up next week will be part three of this series, working with precision masking. And I'm going to go beyond that a little bit, you know, using the object selection tool, but other methods too. And that will be next week. This video is going to be focused, so I'm only going to be using one adjustment. And we're going to start out by coming up and choosing the color mask icon. Click on that. And we're going to select this um, field here, this uh, dead grass, whatever you want to call it. By the way, I really enjoy this picture, this mysterious woman in a field. Kind of looks like, you know, like Mary Poppins has just joined the scene here. So we're going to click right here and select this area and click OK. Now the color mask tool gives us a nice selection of the grass. But let's go ahead and lighten up that selection. And when I do, you'll notice, now this is a stock image, but you'll see we got the sky selected too. And I don't want the sky selected, but this is where this all came about. How can we get rid of that sky? I came up with a way. It was kind of like a hack. But Tony thought, you know what? I Let me think about this, Dave, he says. And he thought for a while. And he says, let's try something. And so we experiment. And we try something. And this is what we tried. We tried a mass calculator. So click on the mass calculator. Now, this is something we don't do too often. And that is subtract from a mask. We'll be using the sky selection tool and subtract the sky from this mask. And any of the selection tools, the AI selection tools, along with the mask calculator, will become our new best friends. Now, I do want to state here, there are other ways we could have done this. You know, we could have saved the sky, inverted it, and got the foreground, and, you know, went into my channels and did that whole routine. And that's fine, and that works well. But sometimes, you know, you're working on the fly and you're modifying a mask on the fly. And that's why this video is called Masking and Modifying on the Fly. Because sometimes you don't think ahead and you're in the middle of making a mask. And you can use your head and think, well, there are other ways we can go about this. So let's think about it. And what I want to do is subtract the sky from this selection. Now, I'm already generating a mask here. And I opened up the mask calculator. So now we can click minus to subtract from this mask. Now that we're done here making the mask, we can X out of this tool. And now we can see our image, but we're still working on our mask. Now the next step is we need to select the sky because remember we want to subtract the sky. 
So let's come up to the CX or combo panel and click this icon to select the sky. And now you can see that the sky is selected. And now what we'll do is come up to my channels. We're going to click on this, but notice the mask calculator here. See, we're still working on our mask. So click on my channels and you want to click on the active selection. That's this selection right here, which is the active selection. So let's click on it. And there we can see the sky is selected. Now you would think that I could go ahead and click equals here and that would subtract that sky and it will. But we can still do other things. We can still work on this mask. And what I want to do next is tighten up this horizon area where the sky meets the foreground. And again, we're still creating a mask. So I can use any of these tools along here that I want to. And I'm going to use a levels adjustment. So click on the levels adjustment. And I'm going to take the highlight slider and just bump it into the left a little bit just to tighten things up. You don't want to go too tight. You want to maintain some detail there, some nice feathering. So I'm going to bring this in to right about here and I'll take the shadow slider and we'll tighten up the shadows a little bit. I'll just bring this in. You know, again, I could go too far and that would not be good, but I just want to come in just a little wee bit just to tighten things up and right there. And now we can make our calculation. All we need to do is click equals. And now notice that the sky has been subtracted from the foreground. And that was exciting when we discovered this the other day, how this was going to work. We can use sky selections. We can use subject selections. We can use the object selection tool and work with the mask calculator. That's what I mean by the object selection tool, as well as the sky and subject selections are becoming our new best friends when we have the mask calculator to join forces. Now we're still in the process of making the mask. So again, all these tools right up here in gray can be used. Now this subject, this woman is still encroaching into the sky area and I don't want that. So I can remove her. So I can simply grab a black brush and I have 100% opacity on it. And I'm just going to erase her just like this right from the sky, quick, simple and easy. That's all I need to do. But I'm not done yet because I can also lighten up this foreground. And to do that, we could come back and grab the levels adjustment. And I can take the midtone slider and drag it to the left and just lighten up that selection so I get an even stronger effect once I output this. And now at this point, we have a beautiful foreground selected just the grass. And what we're going to do is output this to a color grading tool. You know, I love the color grading tool, right? So click on the color grading tool and here's our color grading tool. Now all I need to do is make my adjustment. I've generated my mask. So I'm going to click on the midtone block and just lighten up the midtones like this on the grass and maybe give them a slight bit of warmth. Just warm them up just a little wee bit. And then I'll go to my shadow block and just slightly darken the shadows, just a tiny wee bit, something like that. Now here is the before and here is the after. Now that was scenario one, but I think that's pretty amazing. Hey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's very important. It helps my channel to grow. And when you do that, I appreciate it. And also please leave comments and questions. That's very important. I really want to hear from you guys because we get new ideas on how to make new videos when you guys comment and leave suggestions and you have your own techniques that you use too, which is really cool. So please comment and ask questions as well. Now let's move on to scenario two. We're going to make the same adjustment, but it's going to be a little different this time. And what I mean by that is in the mass generation. Now, the first part of the mass generation will be exactly the same. So I'll be going over that a second time, which should help cement this idea how to remove that sky. But then we want to add the girl into the uh, selection. So what if we wanted to have some effect on her as well? So that's what we're going to do next with scenario number two. Oh, by the way, I want to point out, see this duplicate image button right here on the CX or combo panel. If you click it, it'll duplicate that image. I'm going to make this a little bit larger because what I want to do is I want to keep this image with that adjustment, 
But now I'm going to this image and what I want to do here is start from scratch. So to do that, I could come up and click on this trash can and remove that. And now we can start from scratch. But don't forget about that duplicate image button. It's good if you get an edit so far and then you want to go ahead and experiment from that point on. But maintain what you previously have done. I'll start out by Xing out of this color grading tool so we get back to the multi mesh panel. Now, as I said, the first part is going to be the same. But we're going to be doing double calculations. This is something I've never really done before. So this is going to be fun and interesting. And just like the first scenario, we're going to go and click on the color mask icon and select the foreground color that best represents it. And of course, we want to lighten up that mask like this. And we do still want to get rid of the sky. We're going to need the mask calculator. So click on the mask calculator. Now we want to subtract the sky. So click the minus to subtract the sky. Now we need to X out of here. So click this X. Now we're going to subtract the sky. So we need to select the sky so we can use the combo or CX panel and click on this button right here, which will cause the sky to be selected. And as you can see, the sky is now selected. Now, just like in scenario one, we have to come up and click on my channels and click on the active selection. And now the sky is selected, it's white. And now I wanna tighten up this horizon so we can grab a levels tool. It's in the gray section of tools for modifying masks. So click on levels. And we're just gonna take the highlight slider and bump in it a little bit like here and the shadow slider just to tighten up that selection just a little bit. And now we can subtract the sky by clicking equal. And now we can see the sky is subtracted. In this scenario, I want to add this woman into the selection. And we've already made one mass calculation, but we're going to make another one. We need another calculation, so click on the mass calculator. And this time, we want to add to the selection. So we'll click the plus. And now we can X out of here. And now we need the object selection tool. So let's come over to the tool well and select the object selection tool. Now I have mine set up for rectangle, sample all layers and hard edges. And I explained that last week, why I feel that's important. So you want to make sure you have sample all layers and hard edge selected and use the rectangle tool. And then we'll just left click and we'll drag and make our selection. And now the next step, very important, is to come up to my channels and click on active selection, which selects the girl. And we already have the plus selected here. So now all we need to do is click equals. And now our girl is added to the selection. That was pretty cool. So that was the second calculation we made while creating this mask. And remember, the gray tools here are all at our disposal while creating masks. So let's click on levels and lighten up the foreground. So click on levels and I'll just take the midtones adjustment and drag it to the left just to lighten up that selection. Just like that. Now just to recap, we were able to use the sky selection plus the object selection tool, all thanks to that mass calculator. We were able to utilize those two different selection methods. And now that our mask is created, we need to output it. We're going to output it again to a color grading tool. I'm going to click on the midtone block. Now this time, not only will this field get adjusted, but also the woman with it because she is now part of that selection. And remember, she's all white, so she'll take a stronger effect. So let's click on, well, I already did it, the midtone block, and we'll adjust it to the right here, and we'll just lighten up the grass. And you can see she's getting lit up too, which lights her face up a little bit, and I like that. And we could just add just a little bit of warmth to this selection right here like that. And I'm going to click on the shadow block and just darken up the shadows maybe to right about there now here is the before and here is the after but wasn't that interesting how we could use the object selection tool the sky selection tool all with the help of the mask calculator when generating or creating our mask now just as a finishing touch i think this sky looks a little too dark in this image so i just want to lighten it up a bit just come up to the cx or combo panel and click on sky selection and that selects the sky. And all I want to do is, let me X out of this color grading tool, add it to a curves adjustment layer. I'm not going to make an adjustment. Change it to the screen blend mode. And now we can see the sky has gotten a lot lighter. And it's way too light. 
And there's our mask that was generated. And we'll just take the opacity and take it the whole way off. And then I'll just slowly adjust this to the right just to lighten it up, just to bring it into balance right around there, like 24%. Here's the before and here's the after. But there you go. Just one simple adjustment in that grass field today, but you learned a lot of information here, which you can use on any image that you're working on. And now you know how to do some masking and modifying on the fly. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Well, there it is, everyone, masking and modifying on the fly. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.